if you have your Bibles, and you should by now, have a Bible, a piece of paper, and a pencil, you'll sure need them today, uh, to go to 1 Corinthians 12, we're going to look at 8 through 11, and then we're going to drop down to 28 through 30. 1 Corinthians 12, we're going to start 8, 11, then we're going to drop down to 28 and 30. That's going to be two columns, two columns of discussion on spiritual gifts. And what I want you to do on your piece of paper under point number one, put down 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 11, and when I go through these spiritual gifts, I want you to list them. So here we are in verse 8. For to one is given the word of wisdom, that's one, through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge, that's two, according to the same Holy Spirit. To another faith, now we got three, by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. You keep it, you're writing a list? Come on now. Verse 10, and to another the effects of miracles, that's a gift, and to another prophecy, are you writing them down? Come on now. And to another the distinguishing of spirits, that's a gift, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. Now, by now, you're abbreviating, right? Because they're written in the scripture, so I just want you to list them and abbreviate them. Now, count them. You got nine. You got nine? You got nine. Okay, let's drop down to 28. And 30, he's going to go back and discuss spiritual gifts and pay attention to the ones, the new ones. Here's verse 28. God has appointed in the church first apostles. It's a new one. And second prophets. Eh, we've had that one. Third teachers. Mm. Then miracles. Mm, we had that. Gifts of healing. We've had that. Something new helps. Something new administrations. We've had various kinds of tongues. Then he says apostles. Are all apostles? Are they? No. Are all prophets? No. Are all not teachers? Mm, no. Are all not workers of miracles? Mm -mm. Do all have the same gifts of tongue? No. Do they speak with mm -mm. Uh, uh, gifts of healing? Do they speak with tongues? Mm -mm. You see, an, an interpretation. You see, there's another list there. There's another list. Some of them weren't in the first listing. Did you write those down? That's column number two. The first column of gifts listed were in 8 through 11. The second column was 28 through 30. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 listed. But how many were repeated? We'll come back to that. Now, you're going to have to do some studying with me today. You're going to have to work on this stuff because what I want to do today in today's lesson is to get, and we're going to examine three major passages on spiritual gifts, 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, Ephesians 4. We're going to list all the gifts. We're going to see the ones that are repeated, and then we're going to come up with a corrected list of spiritual gifts in the church. That's today's lesson. It's important, very important that you do this. I mean, all right, let's have a word of prayer. Remember, the Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people for spiritual living. Can't learn it nor live it in carnality. Evidence of carnality in the Christian life is personal sin, mental attitude type, sins of the tongue, overt sins. What must I do to get back into the indwelling ministry of the Holy Spirit called spirituality? I've got to confess my sins. When I, when I do, it takes me to the cross of Jesus Christ as a believer out of 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. The cleansing 
comes from the work of Christ on the cross to the Christian life for sanctification, not salvation. For that indwelling ministry of the Holy Spirit. Out of carnality, stop walking in the flesh, Galatians 5, 16, 17. Stop walking in the flesh. Start walking in the Holy Spirit. Flesh, walking in the flesh is where carnality comes from. And that's personal sin. You got to confess it, be cleansed in order for sanctification, not salvation. So let's do this. And then let's get into the morning study. All right, let's get into the morning study. I'm giving you a moment for you to personally confess your own sins to the Father in the name of Jesus for cleansing for spirituality under sanctification. So, our Father, we thank you today for all that you've provided for us through the Word of God under the ministry of the Holy Spirit who teaches and recalls, who guides us, who discloses, who brings witness to our soul of Christ who brings conviction out of the word of God. I pray, Father, the Holy Spirit would have a full sway in our hearts today because we have confessed our sins. We come looking for the Holy Spirit to teach us great truths in regard to spiritual gifts. The first begins with a clear examination of them. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, under point number one, we already started, but here's point number one. I want to begin by examining the three major passages, 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, and Ephesians 4, where all of the listings of spiritual gifts are under the New Covenant Church Age. We want to be able to correct, correctly count them, eliminate the ones that are, have been repeated so that we come up with a correct identification, and number of spiritual gifts for the church. Now, I know you probably don't have a study guide. Later, you can go to our website and pick it up. But I've got three, three passages. There are three passages, Romans, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, and Ephesians 4. There are four columns. In column one, we've got Spiritual gifts listed in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 11, which you put on your paper. Beneath it is column 2, 1 Corinthians 12, 28 through 30, where you made another list when Paul came back and talked about them, and you found some that hadn't been mentioned before. When you go to Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 6 through, six through 8, he makes a list. Paul gives a list of spiritual gifts. When you go to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, 11 and 12, he makes a list of spiritual gifts. These are the three passages in the New Testament where spiritual gifts are listed. Our purpose today is to identify all of the gifts and to eliminate from the different, from 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12 and Ephesians 4, the ones that are repeated so that we can get an accurate count of the ones of all the spiritual gifts for the church. The spiritual gifts are for the body of Christ, the church. 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, Ephesians 4, they all teach that. Now, when we did our introduction, we did column 1 and column 2 in Corinthians. Corinthians, the 12th chapter, 8 through 11, we identified the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, faith, the gift of healings, the gifts of healing, the effects of miracles, prophecy, distinguishing spirits, which goes with prophecy, various kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues, which go together. In verses, you wrote those down. Abbreviate them, do something. Because we're going to, that's going to be our standard from which we're going to now look to see what we, what we don't have there and what's repeated. When we go to 1 Corinthians 12, 28 through 30, we have listed apostle, prophet, teachers, workers of miracles, gifts of healing, helps, administration, speak with tongues, and interpretation of tongues. 
So we have one, two, three, four. In the first column, we have nine. In the second column, listed, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. However, you will notice that prophets have already been listed in 1 Corinthians 12, 11, so we can scratch it off in 28. We haven't had apostle, and we haven't had teacher. It's not up in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 11. Workers of miracles is, and gifts of healing, so we can mark through those. Helps is something new. Administration is something new. Speaking with tongues and interpretation of tongues, we've already had that. So what we have in column 1, 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10, are nine gifts. What we have in 1 Corinthians 28, 30, new gifts are four. Here's my point number two. Here's point number two. We began by the first column of 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 11, by accepting the nine gifts listed. When we went to, when, when we, when we went to column two, we could eliminate five gifts. We eliminated prophets, workers of miracles, gifts of healing, speaking with tongues, and interpretation of tongues because they were listed in column one. What we're able to add out of column two, 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10, are four new gifts, apostle, teachers, helps, and administration, which weren't listed in the first column. So we have 13. When we leave 1 Corinthians 12, we have 13 clear spiritual gifts. Here's point number three. Here's point number three. When we go to column three, which is Romans 12, 6 through 8, and we look at the gifts, prophecy, service, i.e. ministry, teachers, exhort, giving, leads, and mercy. We look to see if any are repeated that come out of column one or two. Prophecy could be eliminated because it's already been mentioned as a gift. We will add service ministry. Teacher has already been listed. New gifts are exhort, gives, leads, and mercy. New gifts. So in Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 6 through 8, we've eliminated two and added five. Do you see that? We've eliminated prophets and teachers. We've added service ministries, exhorts, it gives, leads, and mercy. So that's five. Five additional gifts added to 13 gives us 18. Point number four. Now we go to the fourth column, Ephesians 4, 11 through 12. When you look at these in your Bible, you will find listed gifts Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastor, and teachers. That would be five that are listed. Apostles and prophets have already been mentioned. We can eliminate those because we've already have them as a gift. We can add evangelists, pastor, and teachers. We can eliminate teachers because we already had that. So in Ephesians 4 through 12, we have two gifts, evangelists and pastors. Are you with me? That makes 20 gifts. But we have a problem. And this is point number five. You should have 20 gifts that haven't been el eliminated.
Well, you got to study this stuff. I mean, all I did was read the Bible. <laughs> so you got to do this stuff. Now, here's the problem, and I'm going to clear this problem up. This is point number five. When I get through with this, we're done with today's lesson because you've got to do your study. I mean, you've got to go back and do all this stuff that I just told you to do. Don't be lazy. Study your Bible. In Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, it presents a problem because they list pastor along with the gifts. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Not one time have we, never have we found the gift called pastor in any other section of listing of gifts. We have not seen this word pastor ever. In the Greek language, it's poimen, P-O-I-M-E-N. It is usually translated in the English as shepherd. Write that down. My, my, my. This is what we call this class. This is Bible class. The word pastor in the English is poimen, almost always translated shepherd. It is never listed anywhere with spiritual gifts, except in Ephesians 4, 11, and 12. Now, here's where you got to pay attention. The following Greek grammar rule, a, gr a gr Greek grammar rule, should be applied to this grammatical problem of a gift. The Greek grammar says this, when two nouns, pastor and teacher, when two nouns with the same case ending are connected by chi, the word and, and the first noun has a definite article, the, and the second one doesn't, the second noun gives a further description of the first. Uh, one more time. <laughs> when two nouns with the same case ending are connected by chi, the word and, and the first has a definite article, the, and the second one doesn't. The second noun gives a further description of the first. In English, we would translate pastor teacher with a hyphen. Pastor hyphen teacher. If you want to find all of this information for yourself, I encourage you to read a first-year Greek grammar book called The Essentials of New Testament Greek by Summers that I studied, page 130, who talks about the special use of the Greek article with nouns such as this. And for advanced Greek students, you can go to the Manual of Grammar of the Greek New Testament by Dante and Manti. And you can go to page 47. It's basic Greek grammar. That's how you answer this problem. Teacher 
is the spiritual gift. Pastored or shepherd is the office of a local church congregation. I mean, you probably call your, your, your minister pastor if he's the head guy of the church. People here call me pastor. I'm the shepherd of the local congregation, the flock. When you read Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, you will discover that there's a definite article, T-O-U-S, with poimain kai dadaskalos, pastor hyphen teacher, or pastor and teacher, it's a, the, the same. Remember how it's described in the Greek language. When two nouns with the same case ending are connected by kai, the word and, and the first has the definite article, the, and the second one doesn't, the second noun gives further description to the first. The shepherd of the church should have the gift of teacher for the spiritual growth of the congregation. Feed my sheep, feed my lambs, is what Jesus told John, uh, told Peter in the, in the gospel of John. John, the 21st chapter, 15 through 17. In 1 Peter 5, 2, 2 and 3. 1 Peter 5, 2 and 3. Shepherds, that's the word poimain, pastors. Shepherd the flock of God among whom, among, among you exercising oversight, not under convulsion, uh, under compulsion, but voluntary according to the will of God, not for sordid gain, but with eagerness, nor yet lording it over those who are allotted to your charge, but proving to be an example to the flock. It's the word poimain. It's the word pastor. And what Paul is saying in Ephesians is the man with the teacher is the one who should be the pastor, the shepherd, because he's to feed. John 21, 15 through 17, he's to feed the sheep and the flock, the the older congregation and the younger congregation. You should read Acts 21, 28 through 30, which is going to tell you the same thing. Therefore, we don't have 20 gifts. We have 19. Because pastor, teacher is one. The gift is teacher, the pastor is office of a congregation. He's the shepherd. Therefore, we have 19 spiritual gifts to help establish the church of Jesus Christ in the world, and that's the study of the book of Acts. Now, You really need to study this. In our school of biblical theology, we have just started a new quarter that's taught every second and fourth Saturdays in this church. To anybody who wants to attend, it costs you nothing. It's supported by grace within our church. We are teaching two courses that would really be important to you. We are teaching pneumatology from 9.30 to 11.30 on the second and fourth Saturdays of every month. We just started in January. It's not too late to enroll. If you miss January, it is. We're teaching pneumatology, the study of the Holy Spirit in the church age. And we're studying pistology, the study of faith. You go, in the, you go to the first class, 9.30, 11.30. We feed you lunch. And from 12 to 2, you study pistology. This is called the chaplaincy 
courses. It takes a year to go through the chaplaincy program, and we certify you. And if you're a member of a church and you're in any capacity of leadership or ministry, you should be attending this. This, this is seminary kind of stuff for you. On your level, you don't have to, listen, you just have to want to study the Word of God is the only requirement. You don't go through some test to get in. You just bring your Bible, a pencil, a paper, a notebook, and, a, and away we go. There are two-hour classes. Pneumatology is two hours. Pistology is two hours. You do it twice a, twice a month because most of our people, most of the people who attend our school, they don't have the money to go off to some kind of seminary teaching. They don't have the money to do that. They don't have the time. They all work. They got families. They're trying to have ministry. I mean, so we try to work around that schedule to bring them in twice, twice on Saturdays every month. And then care, that's why it takes us a year to get through. If you graduate from the chaplaincy program, you can apply that to go through our, our, our theological seminary where you study the Greek language and Hebrew and other courses. Uh, but, you know, you don't have to, but if you want to, you could. So let me encourage you to do that. Because we're through with our study today. I want you to identify 19 gifts and understand why there are 19 and not 20. And then when we come back next week, having looked at all these, we're going to begin to do a study on this. How, how do these gifts work? Every believer in the Lord Jesus Christ under the New Covenant Church Age has a spiritual gift. We'll talk about that next week. We talked about it last week. We'll talk about it next week. Has a spiritual gift. Your spiritual gift is your ministry in the body of Christ. Listen to me. Now you need to read this. First, you need to read it between now and next week. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 27. Your gift is your, your member in the body of Christ, your arm, ear, and eye, and nose. There are no ungifted believers in the church. You need to know this stuff. Your, your identity in the body of Christ is your spiritual gift. Mine is teacher. I'm identified as a pastor teacher because I'm, I'm, I'm the head of a flock of a congregation. And so I'm identified as a pastor teacher. But my gift is teacher. By now you know that. If you want to learn the Word of God, you sit under a teacher who is responsible, according to Jesus in John 21, for the spiritual growth of not only the young believer, but the senior believer in his spiritual growth maturity. Let's close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you today that these that have come our way by the internet, that one understand what is, their, what is their purpose or meaning in the church. It is their spiritual gift. The arm doesn't serve the arm, it serves the body. The ear doesn't serve the ear, it serves the body. It brings hearing to the body. The eye is not for the eye, it is to bring sight to the body. We need to understand these kind of principles. Thank you today, Father, for bringing those who are interested in spiritually gifted ministries in the church. Everybody has one. How come they don't know what it is? They don't know what the gifts are, and so we've identified them. We've taken time to identify the gifts. There are 19, and we've explained why there are 19. May they be good students of the Word of God. When we come back, we can understand more of what Paul is going to teach in 1 Corinthians 12 
in 1 Corinthians 13 and 1 Corinthians 14 about spiritual gifts. We've made our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.